I'll tell I'll tell a story. Uh, no, you don't, you don't tell it. yeah, well, you know. I'm good with you. Good with you. There once was an open mic in town called Full English. Full English. Badass. Badass. And it was done in the same sense that this was done. Which is if you're motivated, you hop up and Fill the void that's left by a mic getting cold and lonely and starting to feel sort of sad. And at the time we were in full English, we used to do the same situation that we're doing here tonight, and we'll do here hopefully for the next four years or longer, maybe indefinitely, at least for the length of the night. So full English. It came about that it was the only venue in town, I think besides Rue de Maya, where there was no sign-up sheet. I'm getting to a story. You'll like the personal story. You don't even know the personal story, man. You don't even know the personal story, and you're going to dig it. So, Paul English was an open mic where you could do whatever you want. We had guitars, several different guitars, Jeremy and others, and Drew, and Sadly. And we would just jam. You just hop up and you just jam, and you never knew what the fuck would happen. And as I explained it to friends, it was the most active, dynamic, volatile open mic in the in the city, which is what this is going to become because it's the same thing, which is what I'm going to. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm coming to the story. The part of the story that tells you why I treat Tom and I call it Quaker style, and it's a personal story because Tom's never heard it, so I thought a charity and this is going to go out to my brother. In a Quaker style meeting, as I describe it, in a Quaker style meeting, there are no preachers, there are no masters of ceremony or pastors or people wearing white collars. You go into a place sort of like this, uh, perhaps a building or not, and you sit quietly and peacefully and listen to the sound of the people breathing. Because, you know, I've decided over the last several days, breathing is a myth. <laughs> It's based on reality, but it ain't actually true, because what you do and who you are is not breathing. <laughs> breathing is what the air does when it gets bored. It goes in and out of you. Sometimes it goes in and out of you fast, and sometimes it goes in and out of you slow. As far as I can tell, the air is the only thing that's actually truly alive. So you'd sit and you'd listen to the sound of the breathing, which as you can imagine, is quite a beautiful thing. Sort of like an open mic, like I was sort of all coming right back around. And when you're motivated, you hop up, and as I described to other people, as I was trying to tell them what full English or rise rod might be. When I was a kid, my kids still did this, and I would do it with them when they were young. We would all lay on the floor, and I can only assume, but I assume it's a pretty good thing, that y'all would do this too. You'd lay on the floor, and in the middle of the room, you'd have a balloon that you'd blown up with your mouth. And you'd keep the balloon up in the air. my Quaker style, if the balloon starts to fall and somebody vacates, which is how I got here in the first place because the balloon was going to fall, <laughs> you keep it up in the air and you 
keep that energy level up and talk about things like love and eternal beauty, unconditional surrender to the power of love, which as far as I can tell is also what it's about. Maybe that's what the air wants you to do, it just wants you to say, fuck it all, I'm going to surrender unconditionally to love and let it be, go everywhere into this mic and that ground and that rock and my son and summer and everybody else. Remember, this is supposed to be about poker style open mics and full English, right? Well, partial part of the story, and Tom's not present yet, so I gotta hang on. We'll just strum a little bit. All right, here it comes. The reason I call it Quaker style is because a long time ago, my brother of blood, three years my senior, who pooped it all and awful, you didn't think he's older than me. I always think he's younger. The guy always thinks sort of funny, because he likes to think he's older. <laughs> One time he was the bartender at Hole in the Wall, and I know that's become a topical event these days because they're trying to close it down. Yeah. I ain't gonna love him. He was the bartender, met his wife there, his first one. And he was walking over in Hyde Park one day. And I don't know how he got the news, but he got the news that a friend of his killed himself, killed herself. And as the case would have it, he was walking down the street, and over to the left of him was a Quaker chapel, possibly a Quaker church. And as there are always powers that control us beyond our own, and to me that's sort of the thing, is to find out what you don't know about. That's what's exciting. That's what, what I refer to as the powers of be. So the powers of be said, Michael, come into the Quaker house. So he did. And he sat quietly contemplating the death dear sweet friend. So for all these years, it's been my intention to honor my brother of blood. And that power that be, that unknown force, that thing, that wind, that air that keeps us alive, because it knows that we're in our absolute best when we have our forehead against our loved one or might be kissing and we're sharing their breath. And we are not I love you too. But I love you too. So when you come to a broad Dom and you see the balloon fall, don't let it ever hit the ground. When you go in an HEB and you find yourself being dissuaded from unconditional love and the power of I love you too, don't be dissuaded. That cashier wants to help you. That bus boy, that baggage handler, that garbage truck, that bus. This is a Quaker style meeting because I am moved to speak. I am moved to say that we are so incredibly loved and thankful to be fucking alive at all. I know of someone, more than one, people who are not here. They're in my right shoulder, they're in my left arm, they're in my right fingers, they're in my right hand. Because they are still alive. It just happens they're not keeping the balloon afloat. Peace. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs>